Praise the Lord. Happy Tuesday, everyone. I hope you're having a great day and staying safe inside. We do have this hurricane going on today, and um, I was actually out running some errands, and there were some trees down, and um, my whole big trees, not just branches, and all the lights were out on the major roads, so it was pretty dangerous, um, but I made it home safely, so I pray you all are safe, or if anyone in your family is going out today, that everyone is safe today. Um, so today I just have a reminder of our um, identity in Jesus. Will Jesus deny me is what we will be focusing on today. Will Jesus deny me is the question that we can ask ourselves today after this study. Um, so very quickly, we will be looking in the book of Matthew. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 10, um, verses 32 to 42. Verse 32 says, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. That's one verse that um, really struck a chord in me because everyone always says, oh, God is, you know, so peaceful and loving. And why would he send anyone to hell? Well, he doesn't send anyone there. <laughs> It's, it's up to us. We have to make decisions for ourselves. And, he, and it even says in his word that he, he just said it. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. He didn't come to send peace on earth. But he came to send a sword, which was his word, and which was himself. So, um, verse 35. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's foes shall be they of his own household so your enemies could be in your own household okay and that says he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me and he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me he that findeth his life shall lose it and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it he that receiveth you receiveth me he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. 36. It says, and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. So what that means is that um, there's going to be people, um, you know, and then it goes on to say, you know, the mother and the, the daughter against the mother-in-law and everything like that. So it's saying that there's going to be people in your life. There's going to be family members, um, close friends that don't agree with what you're doing um, as far as your walk with God. <clears throat> they may say, you know, you know, why do you go to that church? Why do you believe that? Even why do you dress like that? Um, why are you doing that? Why are you giving your money to the church? And that can cause um, strife. That can cause um, a lot of tension, um, anger. And um, we have to stand up for what we believe um, we have to stand up for what's right and stand up with Christ and not deny him you know if 
because if we deny him, he's going to deny us. You know, and it doesn't matter what we've done because um, if we go to Matthew uh, 7, 22 and 23, um, and then it, uh, Jesus was saying, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So we have to know God. We have testimonies of miracles. Um, healings and different things that have happened in our lives but the common person might say oh well that could just be a coincidence oh you guys prayed and then the next day you didn't have that tumor or you know whatever the situation was but nobody can say that when you were filled with the Holy Ghost and you spake in tongues that that was just a coincidence that is a supernatural experience the infilling of the Holy Ghost, the evidence of speaking in tongues. There's no, you can't make that up. That happened in the book of Acts and it happened in our lives. And that is our greatest testimony. And um, that is what makes us um, real, true witnesses of Jesus, that we can witness that, um, that miraculous gift that he's given us and we explain that to people and some people are scared some people are taken back you know but until they know until they have that experience for themselves they may always be a little skeptical about it um a uh, pastor and i we even had uh, dinner with um, a couple of friends of ours one time and um they asked us if you could learn how to speak in tongues so, um, no, you, uh, the, the real answer is no, you can't learn it. It is, it is God flowing through you. The spirit gives the utterance. So the spirit makes the words. We don't learn the words. And so, you know, that's just one of the things that some people, you know, might ask you, can you learn to do it? No, as you mature and grow, um, in Christ, those tongues can actually change, though. You may start speaking in um, other other languages, other words that you've never um, spoken before. When you initially start speaking in tongues, it, it changes over. But anyways, that's a whole different topic. But I'm just saying that um, let your experience of being filled with the Holy Ghost be your testimony. Let that be what you share with people. Um, you can also share whatever you want, you know, but that is ultimately something that it can't be denied. It can't be shot down because you know it was real and um, it's just something that is so powerful and supernatural. And that is, that is who we are. We are the people of the name of Jesus. We are filled with his spirit and we are here on this earth to be witnesses and we're here not to deny Jesus, but to glorify him, to make him known, let it be obvious, and not hide our lights under bushels. Amen. So I just pray that this has encouraged you today. And um, go back and read um, Matthew, just read Matthew chapter 10 um, for just a, a deeper understanding and just a refresher of this video today. All right. God bless you and have a wonderful day.